Hi and welcome everyone to this session on Typefold Development by Tony Morris. And we're so glad you could join us today, Tony. Thank you. Uh, I'll just share my screen. Hello, everyone. Um, thanks for coming along. And uh, sorry I can't be in India. Um, so I'm here in, in my home office in Brisbane, Australia. And uh, my plan this evening, or this evening for me, um, is to talk to you about uh, yeah, 30 countries. That's pretty cool. Um, talk to you about um, just some workflows um, in um, solving some problems, some programming problems, um, in this case, using the Haskell programming language. Um, so um, my, my plan this evening is to, um, just because, um, you know, we're online and so on, I, I'm going to talk to you through my, my thinking as I solve these problems. And uh, I'm going to solve these problems as if you've never seen them before in your life. Um, these problems that you see here, they're, they're available on uh, GitHub. Um, and I think I've, I've put, there's a link there available, if not, just let me know. And uh, what I'd be really, I, I can see the chat, we we're, were having chat problems early, but I can see that. Um, so what I'd really like to do is if anyone has any questions along the way, um, you know, how do you solve this or why this or anything, please just put it in the chat. And uh, I'd be happy to take those types of questions as we go. Um, okay, so we're on a pretty limited time budget. Um, and uh, so I'm, I'm gonna talk you through some problems. Um, uh, one option, by the way, um, is, uh, you know, because I'm not there, I, can't, I don't really know your skill set for, for each of you in the audience. Some of you may have never seen a problem like this, like these before in your life. Um, so I'm going to start from the start. Maybe you want to see a bit of a, a hard problem as well. Um, that's no problem. Just let me know and, and I'll, I'll skip over to that. Oh, not hard, but harder. Um, so just to give you a, a bit of a, a rundown of what we're looking at here. Um, we're looking at a, a GitHub repository. It contains a bunch of exercises. Um, these exercises um, I developed with a bunch, a, a few other little, a few other people about um, sixteen years ago, I think it was. And it's evolved over time. And and you're looking at where it currently is. It's written in the Haskell programming language. Um, so I'm going to assume um, for this that uh, you're not familiar with Haskell. Um, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk you through that a little bit. Uh, yes, that is the repository that someone just asked. That's the correct one. Um, so I'm going to talk you through these problems and I'm going to talk you through the Haskell as well as if you've never seen it before. And if you get any questions along the way, please let me know. Um, so what you're looking at here, um, so th this is um, on this line here, line 14 to 17. I'm just going to explain to you what this is this is saying here. So this data keyword, <clears throat> what we do with the data keyword is we define a data type. Um, no different to uh, if you're familiar with uh, Java or C Sharp or anything like that, you define data types using the class keyword, but in Haskell we use the data keyword. And following that, we have the name of the data type. Um, so in this case, the name is optional. And then we have what's called type parameters um, after, the, uh, after the data type name. In this case, there's only one type parameter. I've called it A. <clears throat> so this is the data type name and uh, one type parameter A. Followed by the equal sign. And then uh, we have a list of constructors. These are called constructors after this. So the constructors are followed by the pipe sign. Sorry, this pipe sign sits in between the constructors. This constructor here, that's to say the name of the constructor being full. Um, and so we put the constructor name and followed by that, we put the uh, the arguments that go into that constructor. Um, so like I was talking about before, um, Java and C Sharp, constructors in those languages have to have the same name as the data type um, or the class. But in Haskell, that's not necessarily true. So we have this constructor full with one argument. And then we have this constructor empty that and empty has no arguments. So if we just kind of let's just develop a little bit of an intuition for this data type. <clears throat> so a when I say type parameter, you can think of it as like a generic 
um, or it's just saying optional of anything. It's 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 a uh, uh, when we fill out the type for this data type, it will be substituted. Um, so just like you could have a list of integers, we could have an optional of the integers. Um, a A stands for the integers part. Um, so it's just saying anything. Um, we can construct it with full, and when we do, we have to pass in one of those A's, or we can construct it with empty, in which case we don't have to pass in anything at all. It'll just make one. So one, one intuition or one way of thinking about this data type is optional is a list of A's. However, it has a maximum length of one. Um, so that's one way to think about this data type. So it either has one A or it has no A's. Um, so that's just one way to think about optional. There's other ways to think about it, but that's I find that a pretty useful way. It's a list of A's with a maximum length of ones, or another way of saying that is it has zero or one A's. Um, now onto the type hole development um, sort of theme. <clears throat> Pardon me. Um, I'm going to so say that that's the data type there. There's no exercise there. The first exercise to look at is, uh, is this exercise here. <clears throat> I'll just have a quick sip. And uh, I, 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 um, the, the problem with this sort of notation is um, it's quite simple um, in terms of its concept, but the words, when you try to explain it, it doesn't sound simple. Um, it's always been a bit of a puzzle for me is how do I explain this so that it comes out simple. So I'll, I'll try my best. Um, so you may think of this, so map optional is just a function name, just, just like you might think of functions in, in any other language. Um, double colon means has the type. Um, and we're saying that map optional has the type and there's the type there. It's that big expression there. And the way to read this is um, we are first pass the function and that function turns A's into B's. And then you pass an optional of A and don't forget what optional is. It's a, it's a list of A's with a maximum length of one. And then it returns an optional B, which again is a, um, a list of B's with a maximum length of one. And our goal here is to, to solve this problem um, so fill out a function that has this type. So first of all, we're going to delete this and, uh, and feel free to follow along um, on your computers at home or, or wherever you might be um, to solve this problem. <clears throat> but when I solve this problem, um, and because like I said, I'm going to solve this problem as if I've never solved it before, I'm going to show you the tools that um, I think would be really, really helpful um, if you came across a, a problem like this before that you've you, that's unfamiliar. And so I'm going to pretend that I've never seen this problem before and I'm, I'm going to um, use those tools to solve it. Um, so first of all is the first thing I do is I simply just delete that. That was just a placeholder for the exercise. And uh, at this point you might ask yourself, well, um, maybe you might say, look, I'm just totally confused. I wouldn't even know where to start. And the key tool, um, so you might have a little bit of a clue of where to start, or you might just have none at all. Now, if you have none at all, you've just absolutely no idea where to start, um, you simply go for the underscore, all right? So you go for the underscore, okay? You just type underscore in. Um, and then I'll just back up here a little bit, actually. Um, so just to give you an idea of what's, so I, here I am in the repository, and I just type jhdi. Um, in this case, it won't, um, uh, it won't, uh, hang on, I'm just going to get type GHCI and then I put the underscore in. And uh, so I put the underscore in and I've just said, look, I have no idea where to start on this kind of problem. And so what we want to do every time we make a change is we want to reload. Okay, so colon reload at GHCI. And when we reload, it says, hey, you know what? This doesn't compile, all right? It doesn't compile, and I'm just scrolling up here. And what an underscore denotes, it's called a type hole, all right? So we've said um, anything starting with an underscore is a type hole. And uh, we just said, look, there's a hole in my code. I don't know what goes there. And this error message that you see down here um, is basically really trying to help you out to solve what goes into that hole. 
And it says, look, I've found a hole and there's the type of the hole. You need to put something that has that type, right? Because we know that that's the type of our expression here. Um, you need to put something that has that type into that hole. Something needs to replace it that has that type. Um, so that's, that's tool number one, which is just underscore. I have no idea, underscore. Um, there are a few other things here that it tells you. Um, I'm going to ignore those. Some of those are actually the answer. Um, sometimes it does just give you the answer, um, but I'm just going to ignore those. So we're just looking at the type hole here. <clears throat> now, the second tool I want to give you is you see a type hole and uh, it says to you, it, um, if the type of the hole is a function, which it is, right? And it's a function because you can see that there's these arrows here. So the second tool is if the type of the hole is a function, then what you need to do is replace the type hole with backslash. So backslash means lambda in Haskell. And then you need to give it a name. And I'm just going to give it a name called F or Fred. And then you type arrow and then you type underscore again. And you simply just do this mechanically. And if you do this mechanically, um, you'll get even more help when you go back down here to GHCI and you type reload. And we, we're going to have a look at the, uh, the hole again. And it says, look, I found another hole in this time, but um, this is the type of that hole. So the type of the hole has changed. Um, you know, it doesn't say this at the start anymore. So the type of the hole has changed. And, uh, but the type of the hole is still a function. Okay, so I'm going to use that second tool again. Uh, I'm going to replace that type hole with, you know, backslash, a name, arrow, underscore. I'm going to do that mechanically. And then I'm going to reload yet again. And, uh, now I'm looking at a type hole, and the type hole is, uh, well, it says it's anything of type optional B, so it's not a function anymore. Um, <clears throat> so it's not a function anymore, okay? We need to put something that has this type in that hole. I need to substitute some value that has that type into that hole. <clears throat> so, you know, um, I'll show you... Um, a couple of other things that uh, that will help you with. Um, so um, the, the, the next thing it'll show you is something called relevant binding. So relevant bindings are simply things that things that have values that are available to you. These might help you solve this problem. And it says, well, there's X and so there's X there. And X has that type, optional A. And then there's F, which has the type A to B. And then there's myself. So the function we're trying to solve, <clears throat> maybe it needs to be recursive. Um, I can tell you it doesn't need to be recursive. So relevant bindings is saying, hey, maybe these things will help you fill out this type hole. And then the other thing to look at is something called the valid holes fit. Um, so what this is saying is it's saying, if you type this, if you put this thing into that hole, it will work. It will compile. Um, it, and sorry, I should rephrase that. It will compile, but I don't know if it will work because the, you know the compiler doesn't know exactly what we're trying to solve. But it will compile, and it's and if you have a look at this valid hole here, it's empty. It's saying, hey, if you just put empty there, it'll compile, uh, but maybe that's not what you want. Um, it doesn't really know that. Oops, I just scroll there. So and, and just to demonstrate that, I could just put empty there. Okay, so empty, and then I reload, and it says, hey, everything compiles, everything's great. Um, <clears throat> now, however, um, with this particular problem here, this is actually not the solution that we want. Okay, and you can, so there's some tests up here. Um, so I'm going to copy and paste this test. Just to, There's a way to run the test, but just a, a quick dirty hack is to copy and then paste. So I've pasted the test in at GHCI. I'm going to run it, and uh, you can see it didn't give me the same answer. It said empty um, rather than full nine. Okay, so basically what we want this function to do is if, if this optional, um, this thing here, this X is of type optional, X is of type optional, 
if this optional has an A in it, right, so it's full, then we want to run this function on it. We want to plus one to the eighth and get back um, nine. So what we, what we want to do in this case is we want to uh, examine the optional and we want to say, hey, look, which constructor were you constructed with? Were you full or were you empty? We want to pull apart the optional, this X here. Okay, we want to pull it apart and say, hey, which one of these two things are you? Okay, so that's not the correct answer. It does compile, but it's not the correct answer. And the way you pull apart a data type is you do what's called pattern matching. Um, now, the quick, dirty way to do pattern matching, there's, there's a number of syntaxes to do pattern matching in Haskell, um, but the long-handed or, or just, you know, if, if you just don't want to think about all the other ways is you just type case x of, okay, um, and just, just to get going, um, so when you say case x of, you're saying, well, is x one of these things? It's like a switch statement um, that you might see in other languages. We're just saying, hey, which of these, which of these ways was, case, uh, was x constructed with? Um, so one way may be empty. And what you do then is you just put an arrow and then you say, in this case, I'm just going to say, I don't know. And in this case here, we're going to say full, and I'm also going to say, I don't know. <clears throat> um, so we basically split the X out and we said, hey, were you empty or were you full? In which case, um, this A, by the way, is not the same A here. So I, I might rename it just to make that clear. And you can pull it anything you want as long as it starts with a lowercase character. Um, and these typos, by the way, they can say, they can be called anything as long as they start with an underscore, pardon me, as long as they start with an underscore. So I'm going to see how these type two type holes are both underscore. I'm actually going to name them both. I'm going to say there's the empty type hole and there's the full type hole. Um, and the reason is it'll give me a better error message. It'll, it'll give me messages for both the two type holes um, and it'll give me their names so I can know what to do about each one. So again, I'm going to reload. Um, and when I reload, uh, I'll just scroll up to the top and it says, hey, look, I found this hole, this type hole, it's, it was underscore empty and uh, it needs to be an optional B that goes there. Um, so let's have a look at our other, our other sort of helpful things here. It says, well, there's relevant bindings. There's uh, X of type optional A. That's actually not going to help us because we need an optional B. Um, and then there's F, which is A to B. And then if you have a look at the valid holes here, um, and uh, th this, is, this is one point of confusion that I, I come across quite often, um, because I, I've just told you that we need an optional B, but empty has the type for all A optional A. Okay, so is that of type optional B? And the answer to that question is yes. Um, and the reason is, is because of the position of this for all here. And it's saying it's just anything at all. It's not that A, it's any A um, at all. It's just, it, it's not that A, I pointed to the screen, you can't see me doing that. But I, it's not that A there, it's just anything at all, including B, okay? So one point of confusion, I, like I find regularly and, and uh, I, I don't have a good answer to uh, trying to help you with it other than just to try to really explain it is, uh, is these type variables have scope. Um, is that A the same as this A and, and so on? Um, it's, it's quite difficult to um, point it out or explain it. Um, it's, it, it, it. With some practice, you do get an intuition for it though. Um, it, it's a bit like, um, you know, if you're using Java or C Sharp and you just had generics all over the place, um, but you named them all sometimes the same thing. Um, it'd get a bit confusing in terms of the scope of each of these things and it'd be hard to talk about. You might say this A, well, which A, this one here, that was declared here, not this one declared here and so on. Um, but so I, I'm just going to sort of tell you that this A here is a different A to this A here. And uh, the for all um, is saying it's just absolutely anything, including B. Um, so empty does fit there. <clears throat> and actually that is the correct answer. All right, because if there are no A's in my optional A, um, well then, 
I just don't want to return any bees. I'm just going to return an empty list of bees. All right, so empty fits right there. It will compile. Um, I might just reload and then have a look at the next typo. And uh, again, I need to make an optional B. Um, I have a look at my relevant bindings and it says I've got an additional value here, which is AAAA or R, if you want to call it that. Um, it has the type A. And when I say that, I do now mean that A. Um, I have X and I have F. Um, and I have myself map optional. Um, again, I get valid hole fits empty. Um, now, in this case, I don't want empty um, because what I want to do is uh, I want to examine these relevant bindings. Um, so just, just to be clear here, um, this will not always give you the answer. It will just really try to guide you as much as it can. So it says, well, I have an A, right? And I have a function and that function turns A's into B's. Cool. That, could give, that would give me a B if I, if I use those two values. Um, but I actually need an optional B. Okay. So I, I, I want to give you sort of a thought process that you may find yourself in sometime, which is you might sort of stare at this and go, hey, look, I can get a B, but I don't think I'm quite at the answer yet. So it's like you've worked out one of the puzzle pieces, but you haven't quite worked out the entire puzzle yet. And uh, I, I want to give you this tool, which it'll just be another type hole. I want to give you a tool to help you um, uh, express the piece of the puzzle that you've worked out um, while just leaving a type hole for the bit that you haven't yet quite worked out. So the mindset, um, and I'm just imagining a particular mindset in this case, which is I can get a B, I know how to do that um, by putting this A into this function, but I don't quite know yet how to get to an optional B. <clears throat> now, and, and one way of writing that is in code. So I'm, I'm gonna write this in code using type holes, okay? So you know, how to get a B, all right? Because because that is a B. I've passed in the A. It was its name was A A A A, and I passed it into the function F, and F turns A's into B. So I, yay, I have a B, but I know that that's not quite the right answer. What I want to do in that case is I want to just put a typo. So I want to put a typo. So well, I don't know how well you can see that, but there's an underscore there. I'll put a something. There you go. Something. And uh, I want to put parentheses around this so that it, it gets, so I'm saying something goes here and it does something with the B, but I don't yet quite know what, because I've worked out this piece of the puzzle, but not this piece here. Um, and then I'll reload. <clears throat> and it says, look, you've got this type old here and its type is a function B to optional B. And as we know, if I have a type old that is a function, I could simply just start typing backslash, a name, and then an arrow. Um, but I'm going to skip that step because, we, well, I'm not going to skip that step. I'm going to just have a look what happens below first, okay? So here's my relevant bindings, um, the AAA that I've got. I've still got F, I've still got F, and I've still got myself, map optional. So I've looked at my relevant bindings and I'm like, you know what, that is not going to help me make that. All right, so if you just kind of stare at this and you're like, yeah, that's not going to help me make that. Okay, cool. All right. Uh, well, that wasn't very helpful. Let's have a look at valid holes now. And I uh, just realised there'll be three of them, yeah. Um, I was expecting one, but I saw three. Um, but there's one, right? So the full constructor will take anything. Um, and again, this is including B. And it'll make an optional B. So I could I could take that code and I can literally just simply copy. Whoops, I pressed the wrong button now. I can simply copy and paste over the top of the typo, reload, oops, reload, um, and it compiles. Um, <clears throat> now I rerun my test. Yay, my test works. Um, so does the other one, by the way. This one should work. Uh, that one's actually impossible to fail. Um, and uh, and I would declare victory um, at this point. So look, I've, I've solved this problem and I did it using typos to, to help me get there. 
um, uh, yeah, valid whole fits. It's one of the most useful tools. I just saw your comment. Um, because, like, I, I cannot stress how useful that tool is actually. Um, because, you know, this could be day one Haskell for you, right? And and this is this would be a, a, a pretty good exercise for you to have a have a go at and try to try to crack it using type holes. Um, but I, I just um, I want to reassure everyone that uh, every time I write Haskell or or any code at all actually, but preferably Haskell. Um, I, I am using those type holes. I, I, I will look at the problem and go, yep, yeah, that problem doesn't fit in my head. Um, I will use type holes to get me to that answer piece by piece until I get the answer and I'm satisfied that that's the correct answer. Um, <clears throat> it's, it's a mindset uh, that comes, it, it's kind of a consequence of functional programming. Um, you can see we're not doing any side effects here um, and, and you can't do that in Haskell at all. So. Um, Using those type holes um, is, I think, one of the best ways, particularly for a beginner, um, someone who's only just starting out, just looking at those type holes, using those tools, and just mechanically following those rules, um, you will um, quite often very reliably get yourself to an answer. Um, <clears throat> I'm just... Uh, Um, I'm going to solve, what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve, uh, actually, no, I'm going to keep ranting a little bit about this problem here. Um, <clears throat> there are, a, there, there's actually a little bit of mathematics. I'm not going to show it to you. I'm just going to promise you it exists, um, and that's just due to time limits. There's a little bit of mathematics that I could do, um, and I could I could do it on on the type on this bit here, actually. I could take this type and uh, I could do some, it's, it's, it involves some arithmetic, um, a little bit of type theory, um, but nothing too complicated. Um, it's mathematics that I'm sure that anyone can do. And by arithmetic, I, I mean, you know, addition, multiplication, um, exponentiation, doesn't really get much harder than that. Um, a few little theorems and lemmas and, and so on, nothing too difficult, but I could do a calculation on this and, it, and uh, I'm, I'm going to sort of, I'm going to skip the calculation and I'm going to get to my answer. And I'm going to tell you the answer. The answer is two. The number two is the answer that I would get if I did that calculation. Um, and what does this mean when I come to the answer two? Um, well, that means that there are only two things that will ever have that type. There are only two possible answers that I could put here, all right? And by that, I mean, we well, we looked at the wrong answer, all right? Let's just go back to the wrong answer, comment this one out. <clears throat> and uh, there's one answer, reload. That compiles, but the tests don't work. So this is one answer, and this is the other answer. So another tool, and it's and you'd have to um, practice a little bit on the mathematics, but I, I really want to promise you that it's quite easy um, once you get the hang of it. It's just some arithmetic and a, and a few little theorems. Um, you'd work out, hey, look, there's only two answers to this problem, two possible answers that have that type. Ignoring the tests, um, there's only two things that have that type. Um, I found the wrong one. It must be the other one. And so because it's two, um, and the test failed, I know for certain that this is the correct answer. There's no other possible answer. Um, and uh, to, so, you know, like uh, I would encourage you to, to have a look at that mathematics. It's called uh, free theorems or theorems for free. Um, but another really good exercise, um, and uh, this is one of those exercises that is, that, that is better than you probably think it is, um, which is to try to make that not true. So, um, I, like, just develop a little bit of scepticism and just go, look, you know what, the guy told me it was two, I'm just not going to believe it. I think it might be three. Cool. Okay. Um, now that you think it, it's three, 
you just or, or three or more or something. Um, the goal now is to put something in this position here that is neither of those two answers, and it compiles. Um, so I'm just I'm making a promise to you. The promise is you can't. Um, but but when I say that, I don't want to discourage you from trying anyway. Um, do try it um, because by trying it, you'll find that you can't. But by finding that you can't, you'll develop an intuition for what it means to use types to get you to your answer. There are only two ways to solve this problem with that type. Um, and to me, that is, that is an incredibly invaluable tool um, because you and I, let's suppose you and I, um, well, first of all, we changed India. Everyone is writing Haskell now. <laughs> we'll do that one day, right? And uh, so we're all writing Haskell and you, know, you and I were on the same team. And uh, I had the day off yesterday because uh, you know I, I was wasn't well or something. And I, I come in the next morning, and uh, yeah, you're not there, but you've left me this code, right? And I'm like, oh, you know what? What what were they doing yesterday? Um, now to help me work out what you were doing yesterday, I can kind of, I can look at this type. I can get my notepad out. I can do some maths. And I go, there's only two answers. They did one of those two things. Um, so to me, that is a really useful tool. Um, and uh, and and uh, when I say you and me, sometimes it's just you yourself, right? Like I wrote this code a year ago. What was I thinking, right? And the answer to that question is one of two possible things. That's what you were thinking a year ago. Um, so you know, I was working on code um, just the other night um, that I, I wrote twelve years ago. Um, and I, you know, I looked and I go, oh, geez, um, I wrote that twelve years ago. What was I thinking again? Um, and yeah, so I, I just use that tool and it really helps me kind of get, get up to speed and work out what it is that I was thinking that day, um, 12 years ago. Um, so this is how you solve this problem. Um, just looking at the time. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip ahead. I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna solve this one just due to time. That one's a really good exercise. I'll tell you the calculation. Uh, the calculation is two. There's only two possible answers for that one. Um, follow the types, use type holes. I bet you can get to the answer. Um, I'm just going to show a hard one, um, or I would say a, a bit of a harder problem. Um, and I'm going to show this problem, uh, you know, because, because I'm sure there's some of you, maybe you, you are a bit more familiar with Haskell. Um, <clears throat> uh, if, if you find it intimidating, um, I, I think everyone's capable of, of practicing and getting to this, this ability. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work through a, a, a more difficult uh, difficult uh, problem, okay? So I've kind of fast forwarded a little bit. I'll explain a little bit of syntax for you. I'm just gonna find the problem actually. Uh, you know what? I've changed my mind. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I've changed my mind. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna make up a problem. It's very similar to the one that we saw back there. But there's a lot of syntax um, that that will be unfamiliar potentially. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna call a problem. I'm just gonna make one up, and uh, we're gonna look at this type here. Okay, so problem, and I want you to imagine you, you came across this and said, error to do, you know, I believe in you, um, you can do this, uh, you can solve this problem. Um, <clears throat> so let's reload, make sure it compiles, it compiles, the key to, to it compiling is just this okay down here, by the way. So yes, it's, it, it's, it solves, or it, sorry, it compiles, uh, but we need to solve it okay. And I'm just going to talk you through my uh, my thinking again. Um, so, um, yeah, I have looked at that. Yeah, with Jin. Yeah, so the connection uh, between manual type hole development and uh, program or pre searching with with uh, Jin. Yeah, I have. Um, it's quite interesting. Um, so yeah, but there's a. If you take this sort of this uh, mental model of thinking about code, um, there's there's a lot of rabbit holes ahead of you. Um, they're all 
beautiful and elegant in their own way and, and some very practical and useful. Um, and, and that's certainly one of them. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so just to give a bit of background for the people who aren't familiar, Gin is a, a tool written for Haskell. Um, and what it does, um, have I even got it on this computer? No, sorry, I'd show you if I did. Um, so what Gin does is uh, you give it a type, you just, you just pass it, you say to Gin, hey, here's a type. And uh, it comes back and says, well, here's a program that has that type. And so it fills out the code for you. Uh, so it is related to, to what we're doing here. Um, and, and there are other tools. Gin is one of them. Um, so, yeah, type it into Google if you like, Haskell Gin, and uh, knock yourself out. But it, it does, it does pro it's called program searching. It finds a program that has that type. Um, so, okay, let's look at this. Uh, let's have a look at this type, okay? So um, the, the problem with, with this notation, like I said, is it's hard to say in words. It's really hard for me to say in words, um, but it is, it is quite simple. Um, I'll do my best in words um, just to give you an intuition. So it says, if I take a function and that function turns Bs into Cs, and then I take another function and that function turns As into Bs, then return a function, um, thank you for the time check. Um, so, and then return a function, and that function that you return should turn A's into C's. Okay, so given a function B to C and a function A to B, make me a function A to C. Cool. All right. Again, it's day one. I've never seen this problem in my life. I have no idea where to go, where to start. So I go underscore, um, underscore is just, I don't know. That means I have no idea. I reload. And it says, uh, well, I found a type hole. Um, it's called underscore. And uh, you need to make something of that type. It goes right into that type hole. OK. And you stare at this and you go, oh, what does that mean? Um, well, it's a function, right? It's a function. It says right there it's a function. And so you pull out that other tool that you've got in your pocket. And that tool is, uh, well, you type backslash, nanny, arrow, and then another underscore. Um, yeah, correct answer, Nilesh. Correct answer. So yeah, you start with a lambda. Um, the backslash is, is called a lambda, by the way. Um, if you go and look up the Greek lambda symbol, <clears throat> the backslash is the closest ASCII character to it. Um, so that's what Haskell uses. It uses backslash for lambda. Um, and then we reload again. And we have a look. And it says, hey, you know what? I found a type hole for you. Um, and it has that type. You're like, oh, OK, cool. Well, that's a function. I hope you all agree. So I'm going to follow mechanically and I'm going to type that in. And then I reload. And it goes, I found a hole. And it has that type. And that type is a function. I can see that it's a function, A to C. Oops, underscore, I to type. The reload. And I'm like, oh, does this go forever? Um, the answer is no. I'm <laughs> so. Um, I found a hole and it needs to be a C. I need a C. A C goes in there. Okay. I need to make a C. Hmm. How do I make a C? All right, let's have a look at relevant bindings. Okay, so I have an A. I have G. G is of type turns A's into B's. And I have F. And F turns B's into C's. And uh, I, have, I have myself. Um, there's no valid holes. Okay. Um, wow, how do I solve this problem? Now, I see that my hole is a C, right? Um, and if I look at my relevant bindings, I'll say, you know what? I would have a C if only I had a B. But I, I want you to imagine that you've identified just that part of the problem, but you just, you have absolutely no idea where you're going to get a B from. You're like, I've worked out that if I just, if I pass something into, uh, into F, um, I should get a C, all right? So you go, here's F, here's something. I should get a C. And it go, and now it says to you, you know what? I found a hole and the hole is of type B. So I need something of the type B to slot straight into that hole where the underscore is. And uh, we're gonna have a look at our relevant bindings and uh, our relevant bindings where we have A of type A, we have G of type, a to B, and we have F of type B to C, and we have ourselves, and there's no valid holes. Hmm. 
Damn. Okay, let's have a look at our relevant bindings. Um, so just, just refreshing again on what we need. We need a B. I need to get a B from somewhere. And when I have a look at G, and I look at G and I go, you know what, if I could just give it an A, it'll give me a B. And I want you to imagine again that you've just worked that out. I just, I found G and if I give something to G, it will work it out. Um, so I've just, colon R by the way, short for reload. I, I was going to try not to do that, but I did. Um, so colon R is short for reload. So I reload and uh, it says you have a hole. The hole is of type A. And I look at my relevant bindings. And uh, well, that one looks pretty useful. And actually valid holes fit A. A will go there. So copy paste A. And then I reload and uh, yeah, it compiles. Um, <clears throat> so one thing to think about here is, um, do I have the correct answer? Um, is, is this the solution? There's no test, obviously. I didn't, I didn't write any tests. Um, but is this the correct answer for this problem? And the answer to that question, well, it really depends on the test. Um, but it also depends on something else, um, which I want to talk about, that I think is more important than tests. Test, tests are the, are the last resort. Types are where it's at. So I told you earlier that if I did some mathematics on this, um, I would get to the number two. Um, and there's only two things that have that uh, two possible functions that have that type um, in the entire universe. Um, so I showed you the one that doesn't quite work and I showed you another one um, that does work in terms of the test. So this one here does need one test. Um, this one here, by the way, is redundant. It's impossible to fail that test. Um, but this one here, it needed that one test because the answer was two. All right, to disambiguate and say, well, which of the two possible answers is the one that's the correct one? It's the one where that test passes. And that, that disambiguates which of the two possible answers is the correct one for this, this exercise here. Now, this exercise here that we've just done, when I do the maths, and I again, I encourage you to do so, maybe when I come to Bangalore next year, I'll, I'll hang out at lunchtime and I'll, we'll get our notepads out and I'll show you. Um, but when I do the mathematics on this one here, the answer is one, okay? So it comes to the answer one. There's only one possible function with this type. And because of that, I can now conclude it must be the correct answer. There's no other possible answer. Um, so if it has that type, that must be the answer. There's no other way to uh, satisfy that function's type. Um, so I've just noticed I'm running out of, or run out of time. So I just wanted to help you out with that. And uh, that, yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Um, I, I wanted to so, say, um, I, I know that a lot of this stuff can be quite overwhelming for some people when they first get into it. Um, and it looks like, you know, when, uh, when you watch someone who's experienced doing these kinds of problems, it, it looks a little bit sort of wizardry. Um, but I want to break those steps down for you and just say, hey, look, these are the steps that those people are going through, even for hard problems. Um, and I encourage you to follow those steps as well. Um, and uh, I, would, I would happily help anybody um, do the same. Um, but yeah, hopefully, uh, hopefully next year uh, I can, you know, if you need help, send me an email, of course. But uh, hopefully next year when I get to Bangalore, um, we can we can hang out and uh, do it together. Um, so yeah, I better wrap up. Just I'm out of time. Uh, well, yeah, thank you, uh, Tony, uh, for this great session. Cool.